Now, Procter & Gamble, the world's largest household products maker, a forecast first quarter profits that fell short of analysts' uh, pr predictions as uh, some consumers are limiting spending on name brands. P&G cut prices on some of its best-known brands, which could take a bite out of profit going forward. Joining us now is their chief financial officer, John Muller, from their offices in Cincinnati, Ohio, the great state of Ohio. John, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me let me ask you first about consumer spending because uh, Ben Bernanke yesterday said he expects incomes to, to keep rising and that to prop up consumer spending. But of course, a lot of people are out of jobs and that has affected you, the quarter that you just reported and, and the forecast going forward for you guys. Yeah, we, we are seeing, though, continued uh, market growth, both in the developed market and the developing market. And we're continuing to see interest in, in some of our premium price items. We just launched a new razor in the middle of June called Fusion Pro Glide. It's our premium price razor, 15% above current Fusion. And we're already the number one razor in North America with a 37% market share after two weeks. So while I won't pretend that everything's rosy, uh, it's not all bad either. Yeah, I mean, most people don't know that other people make razors than Gillette, but you did boost your uh, spending on marketing for other products to try and squeeze out the competition. Has that worked? Because if you're worried about your job, you're going to go to probably a lower price, maybe even a generic product. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you're beating out your competition in the higher price segments. Well, interestingly, if you look at the last uh, two quarters um, and you look at private label share trends, both in North America and Western Europe, which would be emblematic of the dynamic that you're describing, in North America, private label shares in our product categories are down sequentially six out of the last seven reporting periods. In Western Europe, they're down five out of the last five uh, reporting periods versus a year ago. So again, I don't want to send the signal that everything's uh, rosy, but, it, but it's really not, uh, not too bad, and we are seeing uh, continued interest both in branded products and in premium innovation. What about growth outside of North America? I mean, are you seeing, uh, are you seeing the engines that we expect to drive the global economy driving uh, revenue at P&G as well? Well, we're, we're, uh, we had a, a quarter where we just grew volume in the developing markets, 12 percent, in markets that are up about 6 to 8 percent. So those parts of, of the global economy are continuing to thrive. North America and Europe, again, aren't, aren't awful, but they're, they're probably about half the growth rate they've historically been. You know, even if you missed estimates on your revenue uh, in the fourth quarter, it still rose uh, if you look at it over uh, last year's number. Do you anticipate growth that'll be serious enough to hire people? Because obviously, not only do you count on consumers, but you hire a lot of consumers. A lot of people work at P&G. Uh, that's correct. And, and um, you know, first of all, it, it's really a function of what growth looks like going forward that makes you confident in hiring people. We're expecting an acceleration of our top line growth the next fiscal year to 4 to 6 percent on an organic basis. We're expecting an acceleration of earnings per share growth to 7 to 9 percent. So that is an environment uh, in which we'll be growing our business and as a result hiring in different parts of the world. How important, by the way, are the currency effects? I mean, we just did a story about the dollar uh, dropping about 5% against the euro over the last uh, month. How key is this to you, or, or do you hedge so much against it that it doesn't really make so, such a difference in the short term? Um, I'm, I'm not personally a big believer as, uh, in, in hedging. I think it's, it just is uh, volatility deferral. We're more interested in, in making sure that we're what I would describe as operationally hedged, um, both through sourcing strategies and uh, with um, uh, procurement strategies. So it is something that affects our business, but it's not something that's controlling and uh, we don't do a lot of hedging. Let, let me finally ask you about marketing. Your marketing costs increased in the last quarter, one of the reasons that you missed the streets estimates. Will you keep the marketing spend up? Uh, definitely. You know, we just launched in our fourth quarter some major innovations into the market. Uh, we've talked about the Razor, but also Pampers Drymax, Crest 3D White. Uh, we restage our whole Pantene line, and we'll be expanding those initiatives globally, and we'll be investing uh, behind that. But as I, as I said, we expect to be able to, with that increased investment, accelerate both the top line and the bottom line. All right, hey, John, thanks for joining us. John Muller there, C CFO of Procter & Gamble, increasing their spend for the ProGlide Fusion.